Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing well. I don't know why Alex is hiding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got a like a small vet meeting here at the farm today, so I thought I'd bring you along with us. It's all about like mastitis and that sort of thing, and like our mastitis journey. Um, and what we've done over the years to try and improve and improve and that sort of thing. So we've just been given the job to go and find a cow that may have a higher cell count that we can then test um, on one of them tray things. I don't actually know what you call it, do you? Don't know what you call it, but basically you put it in a, um, a tray with four sections, pour your milk in off each quarter, and then you can do it with fairy liquid or you have this like special solution, you shake your tray and if it goes gloopy, then like it's got mastitis and you can treat it sort of thing. Um, so we're just doing that and then we've got like a bit of a talk in the calves at first which the vets are going to do and then I'm talking about the parlour routine. Alex is talking about dry cows and our like dry cow routine and Ben is talking about the farm and the beds and that sort of thing. So all components that like um, pull together to do with mastitis. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So we're just going to go and find our cow. We've nominated 367. Yeah as our cow because we know she's high cell so we're gonna go find her and get some samples do we know she's defo down here yeah oh three one fours there but that was a fluke that was a fluke. let's not use her what are you doing? Getting a sample or are you going to do it? Just getting a sample. Samples. Oh. Change of plan. We're now going to get it out so we can do the demo. And so we can show the demo. And she's not down here, she's up top. Say hey, Ben. <laughs> Why so miserable? <laughs> she's over there. Change plan again. We're getting Snowy out because. 367 is in the top building and it's a faff. Very indecisive this morning. We've now got 19 out because she was there. <laughs> Demo cow. She's the, uh, she's the main character. Bella's doing the presentation next. Oh, we won't, but got our little tester. <laughs> we need to get the solution. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, it's a bit pointless. Well, are you going to dinner first? Bella's first in line for the lunch. Ooh, cakes too. <laughs> Not yet. Beetroot, and then there's mushy peas there for you as well. I mean, there's such a load of potatoes. Please, can I have lasagna? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, there's some big pieces and some little pieces. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. Yeah, I'm Ben. Um, we farm here as a family run farm. We work with my dad, uh, Alex, Evie, and my two, Evie and Meg. <laughs> We've also got a full-time man, Richard. Um, we're milking about 350 cows at the moment, uh, averaging 11 and a half thousand, so about 35, 36 litres a day. Uh, we've got a carving interval of about 390 to 400, and then a cell count that runs a bit higher at 175 on average. Um, we're farming around 300 acres, uh, 240 of them are owned, the other 60 we rent, um, and that's put down to 100 acres of cereals, which we try and do about 350 ton of crimped wheat, uh, so that's quite a big part of starch in our diet. Uh, 65 acres are down to maize, and then the rest is down to grass silage, which we usually take three cuts from. Um, yeah, we moved here in 2004. And then dad did. They had about 70 cows and two tractors. And yeah, we just slowly kept adding numbers and putting more sheds up. We'll go and have a nosy round if you want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, so I'll just run you through our milking routine. Um, so there's two of us in the parlour all the time, um, either me and Alex, me and Dave, or 
Dave and Alex mainly. Um, we have 10 units either side. We pre-spray everything when they first come in and then they individually get dry wiped. And then once we've sprayed them in a line, we'll go back to the front, wipe them all, and then we'll go back to the front again to then put the unit on, to try and give them the time to, one, be disinfected, and then two, to give them enough uh, letdown time. And then once the units have come off, we'll then go in with the post spray, just as soon as we see them coming off, basically. Um, liners, we change them every three months, but now that we're milking a few more cows, we were having the discussion, maybe we should change them a bit more um, frequently. Um, we're on a cluster flush, which we all really like. I think that's made a massive improvement to the mastitis in the herd. Uh, Parax, Parax goes through that. We use Precept um, pre-spray, that's what it's called, isn't it? Yeah. And then Super Dip post-spray. They all follow a gate line down this race, which is slatted and there's a foot bath at this end, a hoof count foot bath. Uh, they go through that every milking. Um, on a Tuesday, Thursday and a Saturday, the formulin content's quite high. I think it's at about 7.5%. Um, the rest of the time, they're only on half a percent. Just didn't want them walking through mucky water, really. Um, and yeah, and then they, they're just in these loafing areas out here. As soon as there's 100 cows, they'll go up to the first shed. And then there's 70 cows in the next shed. And yeah... As soon as we think there's enough cows, we'll send them up. They're not in any specific group. They're just the first 100 or first 70 or whatever that come out. So they're all fed the same in the trough. Alex's turn. Um, <laughs> these are the close to dry cows. Uh, they're in here for about two to three weeks before calving. Um, so made a few changes in here so we raised the roof so it's quite a bit more area than it was that was because we got a new trailer and it was too tall to get in whatever um, this tube went in when was it? yeah last summer yeah last summer that's made a massive difference because it was really stuffy in here in summer um, and now like you can feel it it is just like a nice breeze um, them two windows went in at the same time as the roof, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just a lot more area. We bed up once a day thoroughly, but if they do look a bit mucky at night, we will just bed them up again. But yeah, no, they are always bedded up really well because we, often they are quite overstocked in here. <laughs> at the minute we're all right, but yeah. So we keep them very clean. And then sometimes leave them, give them that front bit of yard out there if they are quite busy. And then just a bit more local area. Do they stop in here long after carving or are they straight out? No, so once they've carved, we'll move them, we'll milk them, give them a bolus. We'll get milked and then they'll go straight into the hospital box. Well, yeah, that seems so Yeah, yeah. So, still every other day feeding drives? Uh, yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah. yeah, they'll get probably twice a day, morning and night, and then we'll shove their food up when we're probing them. Yeah. What about your dry cow treatment? Oh yeah, dry cow treatment. Um, so we'll shed them off during milking, and then once we've milked, bring them all back in, put the units back on. Um, once they've come off, then We'll do it in twos, so Evie often tubes out, pass her the wipes. So we'll both have a fresh set of gloves. Um, I'll pass her the wipes, she'll wipe them thoroughly. Tube, the, yeah, teat at a time. Um, and yeah, we'll go around each teat. Um, Which do you tube? Oh yeah, so they'll get antibiotic for 150 or over. Cell count. Cell count, yeah. Um, yeah, and then we'll spray them all and then they'll wait outside for half an hour. We'll get our breakfast and then they'll go into the dry cow because they often run around and go wild. <laughs> Do you seal everything? Yes, yeah, everything, everything gets sealed. everything gets all sealed, yeah. yeah. We thoroughly um, yeah. spray them at the end and yeah, all sealed. So seal, seal, plus all the minus. Mm. Yeah.
Yeah, no, this was a very stuffy shed, weren't it? So yeah. we cut some windows out just to try and bring a bit more air in, and then uh, we did manage to get this tunnel on a grant, which is just constantly bringing in fresh air, so it does feel a lot more airy in here. Mm. Still not ideal, is it? No, the whole it setup, can get but... to 10 to 12 cows in here when we're a bit busy, but... Yeah, we just like bring the bed for the Yeah, the bedding comes really. out and we try and give them a bit more loafing area outside. There's another water trap out there as well uh, that they get access through during the day. Uh, Are you doing a spiel then? No, we'll go, to, we'll go somewhere a bit cooler. So cooler? More vibes or...? <laughs> Long grass, you can't see, she like just leaps in the air like a kangaroo. Gem used to do that. I thought they were looking for a stick. <laughs> <laughs> looking for summer. Uh, so it is getting close to milking time, so they are starting to gather at the door now, <laughs> ready for being let down. Uh, the routine with the cubicle beds is um, well, we'll let both these buildings down into that main cow building where they're all just filter through and go to the milking parlour. Uh, it's normally the first hundred that come out of the parlour come up here. They're normally fairly similar uh, every day. Um, the cubicle beds, they're bedded on straw, which we do once a day in the morning. Uh, that's after letting the cows out. We'll go down the beds just with a fork, scratching any wet or any muck off. Um, we'll then follow down with a uh, lime. We use hydrated lime in the morning and uh, like lime flour in the afternoon. Uh, and then the straw chop will go down after that. Um, yeah, all the cubicles are AIE Ultima. They're about five foot six to the brisket board, uh, seven foot to the head rail. I think they're about 45 inch wide, um, or it could be 42 inch actually, thinking about it. Yeah, 42, yeah. Um, yeah, there's 104 cubicles in this building, and we normally put 102 cows in, so yeah, one or two spare. <laughs> um, we've got a automatic curtain at the back there. Um, not sure whether that'll be coming up or down as soon as it starts if the rain's driving from that direction um, it has got a rain sensor on it so that'll drop that fairly quick and then I think it runs at about if it's lower than five degrees it'll be shut um, anything above five degrees it normally opens up if it's not too windy or wet uh, yeah 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 it, it no it is solid yeah it doesn't let any air through the beds is just they're not concreted it's tire filmed with limestone dust um main reason we went for that is because it's cheapest and also the straw sticks well to it for the deep bedding straw we have had a bit of a trial run on some mats but we just can't get straw to stick to it and we like the we like bedding on straw for the cow comfort and the cleanliness really. Um, we seem to run at about three to five percent lameness whenever uh, we do mobility scoring. So consider that quite good. A really brilliant farm to come visit and it's been a really good walk around. Thank you for sleeping, Alex. Um, Al not Alex, Ben, <laughs> Alex, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Dotty, what have you learnt today? I've learnt about vaccinating against mastitis. <laughs> Whenever I talk to Dotty, Alex always does a voice. <laughs> no, you're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> It brings me a lot of joy, sadly. Alex puts on a little voice and got his reply to anything you say. <laughs> <laughs> right, so those that came on the farm walk, I hope you understood what it was. So basically, it was a mastitis 
um, talk that the vets were putting on and they just used our farm as like a bit of an example because over the past five years we've really significantly decreased the amount of mastitis that we've had because we've changed a lot in the parlour, we've changed our routine, we've done a few like different things which have helped our mastitis cases. So they were using our farm as an example uh, where we did like the talk in the calves to start with which I didn't film too much of that because it's a little bit boring, I'm not going to lie. Um, so, and then obviously did the farm walk. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video guys. If you haven't done already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Tomorrow, I absolutely cannot wait. I'm going to Tulip Farm, which I'm so excited for. It's in Norfolk, so it's quite a long drive. So I'm actually setting off at four um, in the morning. Rather than coming here to milk, I'm actually going to set off down to Norfolk. Um, Ashley's coming with me so I can't wait for that um, she's going to show us around the field and I'm hoping they're going to show us like what happens when they harvest them and um, like when they prep them to go to shops I'm not really sure love these sort of vlogs because I get to learn so much myself so really looking forward to that um, so yeah I will be vlogging tomorrow that'll probably go up next Tuesday but make sure you like and subscribe so you make sure that Make sure you like and subscribe so you know when my videos are posted. It really does help me out and I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one, guys. Bye.